Thank you. Thank you very much and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this uh, launch of the Measuring the Information Society report. And I would like to give you just a snapshot of what's included in this year's report. This report has been published annually since 2009. And it's the main analytical report that is produced by ITU based on its statistical work. This year's report contains five main chapters. In the interest of time, I would like to keep it short and just show you a few selected findings related to each of those topics. Let me start by looking at broadband. Throughout the report, we pay particular attention to the uptake and spread of both fixed and wireless broadband services worldwide. The latest trends show that fixed broadband subscriptions continue to grow at double-digit rates in developing countries, starting from a low base, though. In developed countries, growth has slowed down over the past couple of years. There is still a substantial divide with fixed broadband penetration in developing countries remaining at around 6% compared with 27% in developed countries. Now looking at mobile broadband access, this is growing very fast at over 40% annually. And by the end of this year, about half of the world's population will live within reach of a mobile broadband or 3G network. This is impressive, given that in many developing countries, 3G services were only introduced very recently. Mobile broadband now stands around 30% globally, up from 6% five years ago. In developing countries, the number of mobile broadband subscriptions doubled over the last two years. We still have a gap between developed and developing countries which is big, but with mobile broadband penetration reaching almost 75% in developed countries compared with around 20% in de developing countries. But given the high growth, we are expecting this to narrow uh, quickly in the near future. The ICT development index has been uh, produced by ITU in order to offer a benchmark to compare countries across the world. And uh, it covers 11 indicators and three areas, ICT access, use, and skills. Let's have a look at the top performers and other key findings of this year's IDI. The Republic of Korea, followed by Sweden, continues to lead the world in terms of ICT developments. The other Nordic countries, Iceland, Denmark, Finland, and Norway, follow closely. And the Netherlands, the UK, Luxembourg, and Hong Kong, China also rank in the top 10. Overall, ICT levels continue to mature throughout the world. Almost all countries increased their IDI values between 2011 and 2012. At the same time, there are huge differences that remain. For example, the average IDI value in developed countries is twice as high as the developing country average, and also the gap between the top and the bottom performers has remained. Results also show that developing countries are catching up on the use sub-index, driven by strong growth in mobile broadband and internet use. The IDI can also be used to monitor and analyze the digital divide by grouping countries based on the IDI levels. And the group with the lowest IDI values includes a total of 39 countries that are referred to as least connected countries. They are home to 2.4 billion people, almost one third of the world's population. And people in these countries have still limited access to advanced ICT services such as broadband. At the same time, it is precisely in these countries where ICTs could potentially make a huge impact in terms of improving access to basic services such as health and education and for creating new jobs. These are the most dynamic countries when it comes to IDI improvements. 
The majority are from the developing world. We have heard this already. For example, the United Arab Emirates jumped up 12 places over the past year, Lebanon nine places. Other countries that have made good progress include Barbados, Costa Rica, Zambia, Bangladesh, Oman, Zimbabwe, to just name a few. What is interesting about this group, how did they achieve such improvements? And we will hear more about this later on in our debate. But our analysis also shows that governments can play an important role in driving ICT growth and uptake. For example, by ad adopting and implementing national ICT plans, by creating an open regulatory environment that promotes competition, brings down prices, and by encouraging private sector investment. The report includes a detailed analysis of consumer prices for both fixed and mobile broadband services and for different packages that are offered on the market. Just looking briefly um, at fixed broadband, the results clearly show that services are becoming more affordable. We heard about the impressive fall in prices since 2008, and the biggest drop indeed occurred in developing countries, where prices fell by 30% annually between 2008 and 2011 alone. At the same time, in most of the low-income countries, fixed broadband still remains unaffordable. For the first time in this year's report, we present a comprehensive data set on mobile broadband prices collected by ITU for around 130 countries. And uh, results show that, for example, mobile broadband, similar to fixed broadband, is relatively affordable in the developed world, while services are much less affordable in developing countries. But they also show that a uh, comparison between fixed and mobile broadband shows that mobile broadband services are often cheaper than comparable fixed broadband services, especially in developing countries and for low data volume offers. Now let's turn to digital natives. Um, this is a term used to characterize young people. We heard already about this. This year's report includes data on digital natives population for, that are provided for about 180 countries. And according to our model that was developed specifically for this purpose, in 2012, around 5% of the world population were digital natives, or 30% of the world's youth. That also means that digital natives are, globally speaking, still a minority of today's youth. The data also show that the proportion of digital natives is more than twice as high in developed countries compared to developing countries. This is in line with differences in internet access and use. But the findings also show that young people are almost twice as networked as the average population. In other words, the percentage of internet users is much higher among the younger people compared to the average age group. We call this the age gap. And what is interesting is this gap is much more pronounced in the developing countries. For example, if we look at the ends of the spectrum in a country like Eritrea, internet usage is among young people is almost three times as high as the average, whereas in a country like Sweden, which is at the other end of the spectrum, there is little difference among internet usage between young people and the average um, uh, population. The report also shows that more than 50% of young internet users in the developing world are actually not yet considered as digital natives because they have only started to use the internet very recently, so they are newcomers. But with the growth in internet use in those countries, a lot more young people will actually become digital natives in the near future. So we estimate that within the next five years, the digital native population in developing countries will more than double. Finally, this year's report takes a closer look at the evolution and current state of play of TV broadcasting services. So today, almost 80% of households uh, worldwide have a TV. This makes TV much more pervasive than most other ICTs. And in the past four years, the world has witnessed a massive shift 
from analog to digital TV reception. And the halfway mark was passed in 2012 when more households worldwide received digital than analog signals. The report shows that traditional multi-channel TV platforms face increasing competition from new service providers, for example, digital cable and digital terrestrial TV, also called DTT, more than doubled between 2008 and 2012. But the technology that had the highest growth was IPTV, Internet Protocol Television, with total subscriptions increasing more than fourfold, although in absolute terms it still represents a marginal share of total households with TV of about 5%. So with this, I would like to invite you to please take a look at the report itself, which is uh, full with details on country level and other data. Also, our website has more information. And I hope you will enjoy the four infographic booklets that you have already have received in a blue envelope and which are also available online. I thank you for your attention and I look forward to the debate.